Hi guys. Well, it's your lucky Christmas day. I did not think I was going to be bringing you a Christmas day uh, roundup today, but since it is Christmas week, I guess Manga Bay is out a day early, so it's technically Christmas Eve, but we're going to pretend like it is Christmas day, although of course it's going to be about 30 degrees colder tomorrow than it is today. It is 80 degrees right now on December 24th and will probably be 50 degrees in 24 hours. But anyway, oh yes, I am Sam Mitchell. This is Collapse Chronicles and since it is Friday, December 25th, 2020, we're going to do what we try to do every Friday and that's head over to mangabay.com check in with Rhett Butler and the boys and girls to see what is the, on their minds uh, here on this collapsing planet during Christmas 2020. So this will be the last Manga Bay ecological meltdown roundup of 2020. Not sure I will have one on uh, January 1st, 2021 or not. But to wrap up 2020, take it away, Manga Bay, and tell us how doomed we are on Christmas 2020. <laughs> We're going to start out like we so often do down in Brazil, where we see devastating fires engulf Brazilian Pantanal wetlands again. There you go. Wildfires erupting in August have already ravaged much of Brazil's Pantanal Mata Grossin National Park, uh, the world's, which is part of the world's largest tropical wetland. Fires have so far consumed nearly four and a half million hectares. That is over 10 million acres across the Pantanal, totaling about 30% of the biome and nearly 22 times the area lost to fires between 2000 and 2018 in one year this year. 22 times the area burned in 18 years. And guys, I noticed my battery is flashing. I'm just going to plow ahead until my battery collapses, which I think will be a perfect way to round up, wind up 2020 is with a collapsing battery, but I'm going to plow ahead until the battery goes. <clears throat> this year's intense fires added to the damage done in 2019 when flames engulfed hundreds of thousands of acres across the Pantanal. Sources say most of the fires started from slash and burning, slash and burn farming, which is becoming more prevalent due to the weakening of environmental agencies under the Bozo Nero administration. Yes, from the Pantanal to uh, the Amazon. Traditional and indigenous peoples denounce planned Amazon Railway, which you better believe is part of the Chinese Belt and Road Initiative. The Ferrovia Paranis Railway, if fully completed, would run 1,300 kilometers, otherwise known as 815 miles. Uh, from southern Pará state to the port city of Barcarena on the Amazon River, it could carry 80 million tons, 80 million tons of mining ores and agribusiness commodities annually. In 2019, Pará state signed a memorandum of understanding with the China communication construction company for a seven billion dollar investment to find the building of the railway uh, can you say Chinese Belt and Road Initiative construction 
uh, is expected to start in 2021. Uh, but you can expect resistance from indigenous and traditional communities who say they have yet to be consulted on the project as required by international law. Yes, I'm sure that will stop it. Uh, according to them, uh, according to the indigenous people, ex the railway will end up, quote, expelling people from their lands, ending our food security, destroying our people, destroying our culture, and killing our forest. That is exactly what it will do. All right, we have calls for environmental law reform in Malaysia. Yes repeated water cutoffs due to the illegal dumping of chemicals into Malaysia's rivers have led to a groundswell of citizens calling for stronger enforcement against industrial polluters. Uh, good luck. Uh, there you go. Wish them luck. Uh, so, here is some hopium story about that BS soy moratorium. Uh, yes, uh, despite the success, supposed success, of the, the tenure soy moratorium, observers question whether the ban on soy from deforested areas of the Amazon will prevent loss of the rainforest over the long term. Yes. Uh, okay, the top 10 environmental stories of 2020. Uh, I'm just going to say this. The impact of the corona panic transcended virtually everything in 2020, including the environment, from canceled summits on climate and biodiversity, uh, you know, all, all, all the rest. You know, Manga Bay, uh, good for Rhett Butler for being the only environmental organization uh, on the planet with the balls uh, to claim that Corona Panic was not a win-win for the planet. But anyway, we're not going to go down that road here on Christmas Day. Uh, let's go over to Madagascar. A Madagascar forest long protected by its remoteness is now threatened by its remoteness. Satellite data show an increase in deforestation in the Saratana Reserve and the neighboring Komatsa protected area in northern Madagascar in recent years with an uptick in the last few months. Yes. These northern forests were relatively well protected until recently, but the loss of these forests to make way for the illegal cultivation of marijuana, vanilla, and rice threatens the region's rich biodiversity and high endemism, meaning, you know, all those species found nowhere else. <clears throat> There you go. Uh, we have a historical analysis of the Amazon's mineral wealth. <coughs> a curse or a blessing? Yes. Uh, mining of gold and other precious metals in the Amazon fueled 
the Spanish and Portuguese colonial empires while bringing misery and death to unknown hundreds of thousands of indigenous people and African slaves forced to work in the mines. And now modern industrial mining came to the Brazilian Amazon in the late 40s as transnational firms began digging up and processing manganese, iron, bauxite, zinc, and other ores. Like the earlier iterations of mining, transnational firms, investors, and nations profited hugely while local people saw little benefit. Brazil offered massive subsidies and tax incentives to attract transnational mining companies and built gigantic public works projects including mega dams, transmission lines, and roads to provide energy and other services to the mines. Yes, all this has come with extraordinary social, socio-environmental cost as Brazilian Amazon deforestation soared, land and waterways were polluted, and indigenous and riverine people were deprived of their traditional ways of life and lands and suffered major public health repercussions. And this mining boom continues today. There you go. All right. We have a bold sustainability commitment by Microsoft. And there you go. Microsoft uh, making a bold sustainability commitment. You know, this is, I love Rhett Butler, but my only problem is I do not understand why Rhett Butler, uh, who knows as well as anybody on this planet how to spot this bullshit corporate greenwashing when he sees it, why he continues to give, uh, you know, voice to these planet-eating corporations and their obviously BS environmental commitments. He, he gives them the voice, and then he comes back uh, a year later and, and saying they were a bunch of lying sacks of shit. Excuse my French. Come on, Rhett. Stop giving the microphone to these BS corporate greenwashing planet eaters. You're better than that, Rhett Butler. Anyway, uh, we have and the aftermath of an oil spill in Peru. Yes, I bet. Okay, you know, Manga Bay has their own YouTube channel and what they're looking at this week is the collapsing coral reefs in Hawaii. Uh, on their YouTube channel, you should subscribe to Manga Bay's YouTube channel. Um, okay, let's go over to Vietnam to analyze their vision of the Mekong Delta's future. Sounds like mining in the Amazon. This is probably farming in the Mekong Delta. Vietnam's investment in the Mekong Delta helped turn the nation into a top rice exporter and a manufacturing powerhouse. Today, however, the rice first Rice first policy has become unsustainable as climate change threatens the fertile Mekong Delta. Uh, yes, do you think so? Uh, from the collapsing Mekong Delta to uh, the collapsing rainforest in Colombia as Colombia's forests lurch between deforestation and the hope, the hope for a sustainable future. Yes, 
more than half of Corona of Coronas, more than half of Colombia's territory is still covered in forest, and the country is the second most biodiverse country in the world, but suffers from widespread deforestation. The highest levels of deforestation are in the Amazon, which makes up two-thirds of Colombia's forest, with 70% of the country's deforestation related to land grabbing driven by illegal groups linked to illicit activities. Do you think so? Uh, of all of these environmental commitments, according to this analysis, only 3% of these commitments have been completed since signing in 2016. Experts say Colombia needs a much more ambitious forest policy. Yes, especially given that its embrace of conservation is undermined by its continued support for extractive activities such as mining and oil drilling. Back to Madagascar. In Madagascar's hungry south, drought pushes more than one million people who never should have been born to the brink of famine. Yes. In Madagascar's deep south, 1.3 million people, including 100,000 children, could fall victim to malnutrition uh, this year as the worst drought in a decade grips the nation. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, such droughts and the attendant famines are likely to become more frequent due to climate change, producing more hunger and more distress in one of the poorest countries in the world as they continue to pump out the, what do they say, 100,000 children. Here is another hopium-soaked knee slapper on new innovations to clean up the impacts of mining. Yes. Uh, Okay, let's look at some more of these biodiversity commitments. To slow the rapid lo loss of global biodiversity, many countries have made commitments to protect and conserve large areas of land in the coming decades. But the fate of the indigenous people, local communities, uh, who live on these lands remains unclear. Do you think so? Uh... I anyway, let's, uh, let's be realistic about coal mine rehabilitation in Indonesia. Yes, once covered in vast tropical forest, East Kalimantan in the Indonesian half of Borneo is today the most intensively mined province in India where surface mining in Indonesia, where surface mining for coal has left behind vast expanses of barren land across the province. Under the law, mining companies are responsible for rehabilitating their mining concessions. Yes, however, the authors of this report argue the rehabilitation of coal mines is far more difficult and likely far less effective than environmentalist mining companies and policy makers might hope. Might hope. If you're wondering what is going on with the Sunda laughing thrush, well, the songbird trade in Indonesia is threatening the Sunda laughing thrush.
the wild population of the thrush, a once common songbird species, has been battered by the illegal trade. And according to a recent study, uh, field surveys over the course of 30 years show a significant decline in the number of thrushes sold at markets with an attendant rise in price. Uh, there you go. Kiss goodbye, the laughing thrush. Uh, all right. What's going on with the lifespan of tropical trees? I can't believe this battery lifespan. I'm getting ready to lose this battery any minute. I'm going to plow on here for the final roundup of 2020. Critical temperature threshold spells shorter lives for tropical trees. Rising temperatures as a result of climate change are making tropical forests hotter, which translates into shorter lifespan for tropical tree species. Tropical forests host about 50% of Earth's biodiversity and 50% of its forest carbon stocks. Their capacity to capture and store carbon depends on their health and longevity. There you go. Uh, what's going on in Liberia? Liberia gave villagers control over their forest. Then a mining company showed up. Yes. Uh, some of the new community forests were set up in the remote northern Nimba County, one of the densest biodiversity hotspots left in West Africa. Then, in 2019, a Swiss Russian mining company arrived with a dubious exploration permit. Yes, exposing cracks in the reforms and raising questions about their future. There you go. Okay, what's going on in the Democratic Republic of the Congo, Christmas 2020? Poor government governance fuels horrible dynamic of deforestation in the DRC. Forests in the D Democratic Republic of Congo have been disappearing at increasing speed, with annual deforestation rates now exceeding 1 million hectares, otherwise known as 2.5 million acres in the past five years, and have surged, have surged this year during the corona panic. Poor governance and corruption are considered the biggest obstacles to protecting the country's forest from the pressures of both subsistence agriculture and fuel wood collection, you know, which is the planet nibblers, as well as the expansion of industrial operations in the forest known as the planet eaters. Uh, it's the planet nibblers and the planet eaters ganging up. This is why Manga Bay has reported there will be no Congo rainforest by the year 2050. If the planet eaters do not get you, the uh, planet nibblers will. Okay, let's look at 2020's top ocean news stories. Huh? The corona panic resulted in more trash than ever being dumped into the ocean. And the corona panic stalled international negotiations aimed at protecting waters off Antarctica and the high seas. It 2020 also brought the first modern-day marine fish extinction. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, 
so some more honest reporting by Rhett Butler. More trash dumped into the oceans in 2020 than any year in history. And you can thank the C-word for at least all of the masks and all the rest of the stuff. Okay, you will not believe this, that Indonesia's biofuel bid threatens more deforestation for oil palm plantations. The Indonesian government says it will need to establish new oil palm plantations, a fifth the size of Borneo, in order to supply its ambitious biodiesel program. Yes, yeah, part of the UN sustainability goals. Um, the program will require planting 15 million hectares, otherwise known as 37 million new acres of oil palm, according to the energy minister, so Indonesia can be part of the UN sustainability goals. Energy and environmental experts agree that it is inevitable that massive swaths of forest will have to be cleared to beat this target and have called for it to be scaled back. Yes, uh, anyway, uh, you will not believe this over in Peru, Peruvian court absolves cacao company of illegal Amazon deforestation after, quote, lobbying effort. A local court in Peru today reversed a ruling against employees of a company charged with illegal deforestation in the Peruvian Amazon, effectively absolving them of environmental crimes associated with converting rainforest into a cacao plantation, you know, a chocolate plantation. Um, yep, yep. Uh, all right. Who is winning the Global Human Rights Award? How about Osvalinda Alves Pereira, a Brazilian woman threatened by Amazon loggers? Uh, my guess is she will still end up dead. I will predict that Osvalinda has not heard the last threat. Illegal loggers have repeatedly threatened Osvalinda and her husband with violence. Uh, now the couple has returned to their rural home. Threats to Osvalinda and her community have resumed since she received the prize. Yep, yep, she has a bounty on her head. Uh, illegal deforestation, especially the illegal export of rare and valuable Amazon wood, has been strongly aided by the deregulatory policies of Brazilian President Jair Bolsonaro. Uh, who say the president's incendiary rhetoric is emboldening illegal loggers and others to violence. Yep, yep, yep. All right, guys, good Lord, I can't believe we have made it, that this battery has made it just as quick as I can. Just the, just the headlines. Environmentalists seek to block bah Bahamas oil drilling. Land inequality is worsening and fueling other social ills. Uh, this thing on Sumatran rhinos, illegal Russian timber, illegal Russian lumber flooding Europe despite timber laws. Uh, here is industrial subsidies, on and on. Guys, anyway, it, it is the same old story, uh, but unbelievably, the camera made it for 30 minutes, so 
Thank you. Merry Christmas to Rhett Butler and the boys and girls at uh, the boys and girls at uh, mongabay.com. But I've got to get my canoe loaded on this truck, and I am going canoeing for uh, the, off and on for the next few days, guys. And uh, so. Don't know how many rants I will have, but we're going to let Deb Ozarko close up 2020 in six more days. We're going to let Deb have the final word on the state of the planet at the opening of 2021. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. 2021. Here we come. Bye, guys.